So I just read in a magazine, how do you reconcile VETS expectations with reality? And uh, it says that it is believed that the VETS may have a uh, low self-esteem because there are plenty of VETS that is, um, you know, not, not enjoying your job right now. So earlier on this year, there was a survey done and it says that the dropout rate or the attrition rate for VETS in a vet profession, this includes the nurses as well, is a, uh, astonishingly 38%, which means that more than a third of vets in this profession would change their career, leave the profession if they could, uh, if they could afford it or they do, knew how to do something else, they would live it. 38%, that's pretty high. So where's the struggle? What's happening? How do we reconcile vets' expectations with reality? I believe there are a few different factors. There's quite a lot of factors actually. Today we're just going to discuss four. The first thing which we're going to discuss is the perfectionist syndrome. So we are taught, or rather, rather by the choice of people that has been taken in and the way we are taught, it's always one thing to be perfect. And that is very, very difficult because when you're a perfectionist, when things go wrong, you don't cope very well. And the reality is that no matter what we do, or despite our best intentions, sometimes our procedures may go wrong. And sometimes the desired outcome may not be as what we wanted. Sometimes animals just don't get better. And sometimes, uh, despite the best intentions, the best knowledge, the best medicine, the best execution, the results may still not be as predictable, as perfect as we want it to be. So if we are always going to be a perfectionist, that's a problem. So a vet expects perfection. Reality doesn't provide it, and reality bites. We all know that. So that is one thing. We must stop having the perfectionist syndrome. Secondly is dare to fail. So as kids, when we go to school, we take exams, when you do something wrong, it's a mark with a huge red cross circled in red. And um, we were always taught that doing the right, giving the right answers is the way to go, giving the wrong answers is not the way to go because uh, it is wrong and we are always taught that being right is desirable and being wrong, doing something wrong is not desirable. Is that really true? So nobody, over, uh, no, no, nobody is really, really trained to, um, okay, how to fail? If I fail, is that okay? And we have to learn that it is okay. You know, if you fall down eight times, as long as you get up nine times, you are still left standing. But nobody really dares to fail. We have not been taught dare to fail or to fail okay, in general. So when people fail or when people do something wrong or not get the desired outcome that they want to or just not do something right, they just uh, get all flustered and just thinking, oh, I'm not good at this. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm expecting better for myself and the reality doesn't sort of uh, come back to that and you, you, you beat yourself up, which is very, very silly because um, when we fall down, we get up again. When we fail, we learn from mistakes. We need to profit from failure. That's not easy, but we have not been taught that. That's because we have not been taught that. When was the last time somebody told you say, yeah, go, fail forward, fail fast, fail big, fail often. Surely that leads to learning more. We grow more. So daring to fail is very important. The third factor, which uh, I think uh, it's uh, quite important, is that we have been trained that the desired outcome should be um, the animal getting better. I like to challenge that. I feel that our desired outcome should not solely be based on an animal's health. There are some situations whereby the animals does not get better. They don't um, respond to antibiotics like we want to. They don't respond to the medication. They don't respond to the sur surgical procedure as we want to. Does that mean that we have not done well? Does that mean that we have not received our desired outcome? And sometimes, even when they do do well, owners complain. Okay, and sometimes vets would just go, well, if animal is better, what else are you going to complain about? Because we have not managed our owner's expectations because we are just so focused on the animal's health. So I believe the desired outcome should not be solely on animal's health. We have to take care of the animal's care as well. 
uh, to make sure that they know what's happening, to make sure that that's exactly what they want, to manage expectations, because you can get an animal's tip top uh, condition and you know back to health again if not manage your own expectations, and uh, you see get problems like that. So that is uh, that's the third factor. Our desired outcome should not be solely on animal's health. We have to think of much broader picture. We have to look at much bigger in terms of um, the what are we wanting to achieve um, and what is uh, possible, what is uh, desirable, what what is uh, what what is um, uh, okay, so to speak. And uh, um, don't forget the owner as well. Okay. The fourth factor uh, which I would like to discuss is um, I don't believe that vets truly understand their value in the marketplace. So as vets in vet college, we are trained really, really solely and mainly on diagnostics and diagnosis, recognizing diseases, all the different diagnoses, all the different treatments uh, that's available. We are not really, I believe there is more than that uh, in our marketplace which we are providing. It is not just a pure uh, goodness that we can give to animals. Um, our true value really, really lies is not just getting animals better, also rebuilding, rebonding, or improving the bond, or maintaining the bond between the pet and its owner. That bond is not medical. That bond is unique. And I believe that our value in the marketplace has plays a huge part, apart from just a small medical side of things, but to you know, improve the value between, or, or to bring value back to the owner again, in terms of not by what we do, but how we do it, um, how to bring it back to them again. So that is our true value in the uh, marketplace. It's not just making pets happy again. We also make the pet owners happy again. And I believe that if we shift our thoughts of what expectations are in the reality is that expectations of vets could be I like animals, that's why I work with animals, that's why I chose to be a vet. But reality is behind every animal there's also an owner. So you have to like owners as well to be able to fulfill your greatest potential of bringing both goodness to the animal and the owner. And I truly believe that that's our real value in the marketplace. Not just to the animals, but our commitment to the owner as well. And that's how we provide goodwill. Those are just my thoughts. There's plenty of other different factors of how to answer this simple question of how to reconcile vets' expectations with reality. I truly believe in the end is education. In all the time that we spend in university and uh, the, all the exposures that we have in different vet practices, when we sort of see a practice, nobody really, really sits on and formally teaches us self-esteem. Teaches us about what is our value in the marketplace. Uh, and teach us how to manage our own expectations, what is expectations and what is reality and how do we bring the two together. So if you like this video, there'll be more on this particular topic in uh, the next weeks to come. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel if not done so already. If not, I look forward to seeing the next live event. This is Amity.